Well, it is exactly 9 p.m. on this 17th day of April 2024. You're just in time for the insight on a day that President William Ruto has yet again rubbished the demands by doctors, noting that there are real issues to be dealt with and that the government has no money to pay the doctors. He went ahead to say that if anybody or, you know, condemn those who are supporting the doctor's strike, telling them if at all they are supporting the strike, then they should pay the doctors the money they want. Now, that comes just a day after the Council of Governors warned the government against implementing the 2017 Collective Bargaining Agreement. That, among many other stories we've prepared for you tonight, first of all, let's have a look at what's making headlines. Tonight on the insight, areas along the lakes and rivers and low-lying areas in danger of flooding. Interior CS Professor Kithure Kindiki says as heavy rains continue pounding across the country. If you support the doctor's strike, pay, pay the money they're asking for. If you support the doctor's strike, pay them, says President William Ruto as the doctor's strike enters day 37. And health CS Susan Nakumisha says government will collaborate with doctors under new terms to end the strike. Now, welcome to the program. I am Ian Keitani and our sign language interpreter is Angel Lois. Remember, you can watch this bulletin live on our Facebook and YouTube pages at Lookup TV. You can as well talk to us. Do let us know what you make of President William Ruto's sentiments regarding the doctor's strike, saying that those who support the doctors should pay them. Now, let's kickstart our bulletin now. And the government has warned about over 15 areas that are likely to experience flooding as heavy rains continue to wreak havoc. In a statement today, Interior CS Professor Kithure Kendeke stated that areas along the lakes and rivers, low-lying areas and places with poor drainage are at risk. As Stanley Lugaria now reports, Kendeke said the government has taken measures to ensure public security and safety and is prepared to mitigate any adverse effects of flooding in the country. With floods causing a wave of destruction across the country, Interior Cabinet Secretary Keturek Ndeke has warned the seven Fox hydroelectric power dams in the eastern part of the country are filled to the brim as of this morning, adding that Masinga Dam, which is the first, largest and most consequential of dams is already spilling through the managed structural spillways. If the rains, if the rains, dams are the seers are adding that the river Tana is likely to burst its banks downstream, leading to significant flooding in Garissa, the Tana Delta and Lamu counties. Kindiki has added that the government has taken proactive measures to ensure public security and safety and is prepared to mitigate any adverse effects of flooding in the country. With the National Disaster Operations Center at the Ministry of Interior and National Administration on Wednesday reconvening, the multi-agency disaster management team established during the 2023 El Nino rains to ensure a coordinated whole of government approach to monitoring the current situation and organizing government response programs. Stanley Lugaria, look up TV. President William Ruto has slammed leaders sympathizing with the doctors during the ongoing strike, asking them to go ahead and pay them. Speaking during the final day of the uh, wage bill conference in Nairobi, Ruto said the government cannot afford to give in to the doctors' demands, saying there are real issues to be dealt with. With medics vowing to continue with their strike until the government fully implements the 2017 collective bargaining agreement, there seems to be no light at the end of the tunnel, with the head of state seemingly unhinged with the five weeks long standoff. Speaking on Wednesday during the third national wedge bill conference at the Bombers of Kenya in Nairobi, President Ruto stated that their demands cannot be met 
noting that leaders championing the medics go slow should go ahead and pay them the dues they are demanding. We have a doctor's challenge. We can hardly pay because we've said, you know, there, there are real issues we want to deal with. You have leaders who it is in their place, including governors, saying we support the, the doctor's strike. Really? If you support the doctor's strike, pay, pay the money they are asking for. President Ruto's sentiments come barely 24 hours after the Council of Governors, led by their chairperson Anna Mumbi Waiguru, cautioned the government against implementing the 2017 collective bargaining agreement. Through a statement to newsrooms, the Council of Governors noted that they will not be party to any agreement to implement the CBA, and if at all they have to implement that CBA, then the Treasury must remit more funds to the devolved units for them to meet the medics' demands. The head of state took a swipe at leaders supporting the strike and opposing government initiatives in what looked like a dig aimed at opposition leader Kalonzo Musioka, who hinted at the opposition joining the doctor's strike. We must stop chasing what is popular. We must go after what is right. The third annual Wedge Bill Conference has been ongoing for the past three days with the President William Ruto stating that the government will soon start a purge on public officials operating with fake certificates. We will now confront the monster of corruption head on going forward. Whether it is in counties, whether it is in the national government, those who have earned money using fake certificates should refund us our public money. Ian Keitani, Look Up TV. Now that story was produced by one Nancy Nalima. Health Cabinet Secretary Susan Nahumisha has affirmed that the government will collaborate with striking doctors under new terms. Nahumisha, while appearing before the Senate to respond to questions regarding the ongoing doctors' strike, noted that the collective bargaining agreement the doctors are referring to elapsed in 2021. She further appealed to the Senate to intervene and resolve the stalemate as John Matava now files. While appearing before the Senate to answer questions regarding the doctor's strike in the country, Health Cabinet Secretary Susan Ahumecha noted that the government will engage the doctors under new conditions. To the government being on strike, and they have explained that this is because the CBA was not implemented from 2017 to date. The different areas that need to take responsibility. We have matters for the national government, we have matters that are cross-cutting. We have matters of county government. Speaker and honorable members, I want to confirm that of the six issues that pertain to the national government, we have addressed them. According to Nahumicha, the 2017 collective beginning agreement of the doctors are referring to expired in 2021, further requesting the Senate to intervene and assist in resolving the doctors' conflict. I want to ask of this House that as for that stipend, we are asking that if the interns and should they accept that, then they open room for negotiation that government has offered. They have not come to the table to tell us that, no, we will not take that, we want this. That must be allowed to happen. According to Sears Nahumicha, the National Treasury is this week expected to release 8.5 billion Kenyan shillings to be used for settling of the money hoard to hospital facilities. This solution will not just come from the Ministry of Health. It will come from the whole of nation approach and the ministry being able to implement what will have been agreed on. I have also said that we expect a ruling from the court today. The mention is happening today. But the judge in his wisdom already ordered the doctors to suspend the strike. I want to plead with the doctors that if they respect the court orders and suspend the strike, they will create a very good environment of being listened to and even the government also moving forward so that we meet somewhere with the doctors. John Matava, Look Up TV. 
From health to matters farming now and agriculture, CS Mythica Lenturi remains different that there is no fake fertilizer in circulation across the country. Lenturi has assured farmers that the fertilizer being distributed under the subsidy program is certified for planting and has urged them to pick the said fertilizer from NCPB depots to enhance food production and return there with more. While on a tour of the Cliffin National Cereals and Produce Board Depot, Agriculture CS Mythical Linturi has urged farmers to pick subsidized fertilizers from various NCPB depots across the country to facilitate their planting activities. Linturi has in the same breath rubbished claims that fake fertilizer is in circulation in the country, terming the claims malicious and meant to taint the government's image. <laughs> kuna fertilizer watu wako wahambie wakuyu achukue fertilizer sababu fertilizer hapa waachane na hiyo story na propaganda ya watu ambaye hawataki wa Kenya waende mbele Linturi additionally picked issues with some leaders who are critical of President Ruto's efforts to reduce the cost of living through subsidized production insisting Kenyans are now enjoying cheap maize flour thanks to the subsidy program Hiyo wakulima wetu turundi mashambani tushalishe chakula tuweze kunjilisha kama taifa Tunjiondoe katika haibu hii ya kila wakati ni kuomba na kutegemea misaanda. Na the only way ni sisi wenyewe kurundi mashambani. With a bumper harvest expected at the end of this planting season, Linturi says the government will help farmers dry their produce to cushion them from losses. Nikona pia na ule mpango wa kupeana dryers ya kukausha mahindi. Ili tuweza kuhakikisha ya kwamba we manage post harvest losses. The Agriculture Ministry will also avail certified seeds to farmers to guarantee food security. Tutapeana korosho, tutapeana nasi, tutapeana sunflower. Ili wakulima waende wakapande ikiwa ni dhirisho ya kwamba ya serikali tunajali watu wapa kwani. Tuna tunataka waungane na wengine katika taifa hili tuwese kukusa taifa letu. Tenda Nyula, Look Up TV. Now, activities at the Muranga County Assembly have been rather suspended today following a violence that broke out yesterday, causing injuries and damage over property. Chaos ensued on, Tuesday, on Tuesday's session after MCS stopped the assembly, uh, assembly sessions, rather, demanding the replacement of the County Assembly's public service board members. It was business unusual at Muranga County Assemblies as DCI officers spent a good part of Wednesday morning pitching camp to investigate the chaos that arose yesterday, causing injuries and destruction. This Tuesday aftermath where MCS demanded the removal of Samuel Wamwea and Elizabeth Wambui of Ngararia and Kimorori Wempa wards respectively from the Public Service Board over alleged misappropriation of funds. According to Laban Chomba, MCA Kambiti Ward, the Assembly has selected Kiguma Ward Representative Caroline Wairimu and Gachanjiro colleague John Munywa to be the new Public Service Board members, adding that MCS will unite to fight for their rights in the county. Kuna Madam uh, Warispa na, mada, na Honorable Wamwea. Hawa watu wawiri wamekosa uaminifu na wamekosa kuwa wakitusaidia. Hili bunge la Muranga halita endelea kamwe. Mpaka wale watu tunaona wakona, uh, wanaweza tusaidia na wanaweza tusami, uh, tusimamia. Mweshimi wakaro na mweshimi wakamonywa. Wakuje waingie ndani ya County Public Service Board ili tuweze kuendelea. Rasivio. Tutasimama pamoja na tutashikana pamoja mpaka haki yetu tukiwa waheshimiwa iweze kupatikana. Muguru Ward MCA Moses Mushiri has complained over excessive force that was used during the eviction from the assembly building yesterday which left him nursing leg injuries. Waliita polisi wakakuja kututoa buge. Nasema kama mtu amechaguliwa ame kama MCA hata pare eh, national parliament ama senate Polisi hawezi kuigia kutoa MCAs ama mtu wamechaguliwa katika buge. Polisi waligia huku, wakatumia guvu kupita kiasi, diyo mana unaona kulikuwa na hiyo uh, uharibifu wa amari. Kwa sababu polisi waligia baka prinare, wakatutoa huko, wegina wakagogwa kami nilumizu wa mugu. Onesmas Musonye, Look Up TV. Well, that story by Onesmas Musonye takes us to a fast breather. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Up 
Open, a University of Kenya which was chartered on the 3rd of August 2023, aims to revolutionize higher education by breaking down barriers such as cost, previous exam grades and geographical location through online open learning at the comfort of your home, job, etc. Thus ensuring accessibility to education for all members of the society. In a nutshell, Open University of Kenya leverages technology to deliver education. The Open University has, has brought a new door in the Kenya education system where learners are able to access education in a flexible, affordable and all-inclusive. Intakes ongoing for May and September. For more information, call us on 0202-000211 or 0202-000212 or email us at info at ouk.ac.ke. Open University of Kenya, an innovative university for inclusive prosperity. Let us show you place poor to build your dream home in Baraka Garden situated just 5.4 kilometers from Blue Post Junction along the Thika Gatura Road. Place finest with secure gated community, Majina Stima Eco on site, Usi Tans Nasori's title deeds Zico ready, plus flexible payment plans and financing options. Pay 30% and clear the rest in installments. Get in touch to the site visit. For more information, contact 0794-333-222 or 0722-668-700 or visit our website www.mahasibuhousing.co.ke. Experience the beauty of Baraka Gardens today. Oh, welcome back. Let's continue with the bulletin now. And Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa has assured the United Nations Nations agencies in Kenya of uh, of has assured the United Nations agencies in Kenya for the of the government's enhanced partnership in the implementation of their goals and targets. Speaking during the UN Kenya partnership meeting at his official resi residence in Karen, the Deputy President told representatives of the 24 UN agencies in Kenya that the Ruto led administration will continue collaborating and working with them in a joint development pro programs rather. While meeting 24 United Nations agencies in the country, Gashago insisted that the government will work with the agencies in the implementation of 2022-2026 Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework while lauding the UN and development partners for collaborating with the government in response to the devastating drought occasioned by five consecutive failed raining seasons and the El Nino flooding in 2023. Forever indebted uh, to all of you for the support that you gave us when we had the worst drought in 40 years. I don't know what we would have done without your support and interventions. I assure you that the government of Kenya and the leadership of His Excellency President William Ruto is taking great strides in setting the stage for a new agenda for Kenya. The UN Resident Coordinator in Kenya, Dr. Stephen Jackson, say that the UN agencies in Kenya have aligned their development programs with the core pillars of the government's bottom-up economic transformation agenda, indicating that better means leaving no one behind. Dr. Jackson added that the cooperation framework runs for four years and their vision is to mobilize $2.2 for its implementation. Bottom-up for us is how you translate leave no one behind into Swahili. Uh, it's literally as simple as that. We're both talking about and committed to the same thing. And that translates, as you'll see, I think, into really strong programmatic alignment. Um, the framework, uh, this cooperation framework, currently runs for the four years leave, uh, leading to 2026. And our ambition is to mobilize $2.2 billion, or about 285 billion Kenyan shillings, for its implementation. I have to caution, we haven't mobilized all of it. Shamila Baraza, Look Up TV.
To matters of road safety now, President William Ruto has urged the Traffic Police and the National Transport and Safety Authority to work together to enhance road safety. Speaking at the official launch of the National Road Safety Action Plan 2024-2028 by the NTSA, Ruto noted that for a long time there has been a disconnect and competition between the two agencies in enforcement of traffic rules, thus exposing road users to potential accidents. The launch of the National Road Safety Action Plan is a good starting point for our coordinated multi-sectoral endeavor to improve road safety in our entire road transport system. I expect government ministries, departments and agencies to lead this effort through a multi-agency framework to steer the implementation of this plan and ensure that public sector provides a model for road safety. We all must recognize the importance of road safety and remain mind, mindful of the fact that reckless behavior endanger both perpetrators and innocent third parties. Consequently, we must henceforth implement a zero tolerance approach to negligence on our roads and enforce the traffic laws and regulations to their fullest extent in order to promote safety, order and efficiency on our road transport system. The National Police Service shall ensure that there are no exceptions from compliance, regardless of whether you operate border border, heavy commercial vehicles, school transport, or any other vehicle on our roads. The government is committed to support the implementation of the National Road Safety Action Plan by providing resources, addressing legal and regulatory gaps, enhancing the capacity of the National Police Service to enforce traffic laws, and investing in automation and digitization of law enforcement and traffic management, among other interventions. Now, police in Kitengela, Kajari County, have nabbed, have nabbed Chunga and Bang in non Kupi area and arrested several people in an early morning crackdown. Led by Commanding Officer David Ole Shani, the exercise, which was a tip-off from the public, revealed new methods employed by rogue business persons to evade detection, as Martin Masharia now reports. After a public outcry by Kitengela residents, police today led a major crackdown where they nabbed tens of liters of Changa and huge quantities of bang. <laughs> At Megingo, Nunkopir police intercepted large volumes of Changa packed in polythene bags within a residential area. The houses disguised as rental units were found to be a secret hubs for Changa packaging with a brew packed in cement bags to avoid suspicion during transportation. The undiluted Chang'a is then sold to suppliers for distribution in ordinary bars, fetching prices as high as 600 shillings per litre. Sasa pombe hapa ni mingi. Eh, hata wa mama huku tuna wanalewa. Kila saa. Hata hakuna kazi inafanyago hapa. Idie, watu wafanye kazi, unaona sasa hao mumebeba. Hatusemi wasikunyue, lakini wakunyue masaire ya after job, five. Hapa hata ukuje uchukue kijana atimufanya kakazi huku. Atakuja kuanguka kwa gorofa. Juwari kunywa saa moja. Sisi atukatai wakunywe, wakunywe, arafu after job. Five. Further investigations unveiled, surprising fronts for illicit activities, including a branded hardware store found to be Changa Den and a movie shop doubling as a bank outlet where rolls of banks and raw products were seized. Hii mta yetu pombe ni mingi, tujaribu, mojaribu tupunguzi wa pombe hii mta. Kwa zindiyo tunalelea watoto na tunaishi hii mta. Naona hii shuguri inaendelea vizuri sana. Hii shuguri inaendelea vizuri sana. Na tunaomba hivyo serikali imechukua hiyo mwelekeo. Iendelea hizi kome. The suspects are said to be arraigned at the Kajiado Lokots, with police declaring war against illicit activities in the region. Then I'm back at 250. Martin Masharia, Look Up TV. Residents of Got Alulu Highland in Sierra County are decrying severe power crisis as, as electric lines were destroyed by heavy rains, plunging over 5,000 residents into darkness. They are now calling on the government to intervene as, uh, as the one month power outage has affected hospitals and thrown business owners into huge losses. George Casey tells us more.
Located in Bondo within Sierra County, Got Alulu finds itself shrouded in darkness as a result of recent power crisis. The severe damage to electricity supply lines caused by heavy rains has cut off power connection between Got Alulu and Sengitan via Goe Bridge, leaving over 5,000 residents without electricity, highlighting the urgent need for repair and restoration efforts to alleviate the dire situation. Amidst the ongoing power crisis in Got Alulu, Olao, a resident at the forefront of urging relevant authorities to take action, emphasized that they have been without electricity for three weeks, yet Kenya Power has not taken any action to resolve the issue. We have been in darkness for the last uh, three weeks without power. And uh, this is a big problem. The reason for this being that uh, some of the poles fell into the lake and they've been there. Kenya Power people have not been doing anything about it. The power outage has significantly impacted crucial facilities such as health facilities in the morgue, along with other key institutions. Additionally, the elderly who depend on refrigerated medications are facing severe challenges. We have a sub-county health facility plus a mortuary within. And for that period of three weeks, people inside the morgue but without power, which is a big, big problem. I have a sick mother-in-law and there are several old people within the village who suffer because their medical supplies depend are mainly refrigerated. And we have very many students. Currently they are on holiday. They cannot study. We have very many institutions uh, in the islands. We have the bakery has employed over 200 people working there. Uh, we have uh, Botagulu sub-county hospitals, you know, residents in the whole of uh, West Wards coming for, uh, for checkups. An urgent plea has been directed to the government, Kenya Power and the Ministry of Roads to collaborate and find a lasting solution definitively. It would be best that the Kenya Power and the Kenya Roads Authority lay us so that uh, we have the power back. We are appealing to the government, Kenya Power and all other authorities that are there to help us in ensuring that the poles are moved from the lake to the other stable area uh, that uh, the Kenya National Highway Authority had planned to start their work, which has not started. George Kayesi, Look Up TV. Let's get sporting now. And telecommunication company Safaricom has injected 4.3 million shillings to this year's edition of the Eldoret City Marathon. The marathon, which has attracted top talents such as Victor Kipchacher, two-time winner of the Eldoret Marathon, is scheduled to take place this Sunday. The marathon will feature two categories, uh, the full marathon for both men and women, as well as the uh, 10 kilometers fun run. Nataka ikae kutupita ama kutu, ata, wakati atuko, hii marathon itaendelea. So that is why hii itaansa leo na itaansa na muendo mpia. So next year tutakuwa na problem, tumefungua barabara, talenda hela, serikali kuu. Wame tu saidia kupeana price money ya wanariadha. So price money hiko, hakuna mtu atasema leo atuna pesa. So, Tunaongea na kifua mbele ya kwamba pesa, ye, pesa ya wanariadha wako, atuta tusikia hizo mastori ya kusema pesa imechelewa. Katika ile hali ya kubadilisha maisha, na tanuya metupatia um, ile opportunity mbili za kufanya hiyo. Number one, eh, kuangalia um, uh, maisha ya riadha, kuangalia wanariadha wetu, na kuhakikisha tunabadilisha maisha yao. And then number two, ni kutupatia ile chance eh, ya kuangalia um, hali ya anga. Now, the two remaining matches of the second leg quarterfinals in the UEFA Champions League are set to be played tonight. 14-time champions Real Madrid will be going against defending champions Manchester City at the Etihad Stadium. The first leg ended in a thrilling 3-3 draw at the Santiago Bonabu. Also, Ben Menik will look to get back on track, while minating Arsenal will be equally aiming to be among the four best teams left in the competition. The first leg ended in a, a two-all draw at the Emirates. Both games are scheduled to kick off at exactly 10 p.m. Well, you see, um, for the first time, 
in their history. Arsenal are looking to win a European title this season, but in front of them is Bayern Munich, a European powerhouse. Question is, will they be able to win in the second leg at the Allianz Arena after failing to seek, uh, to win in front of a fully packed Emirates Stadium last weekend? Remember, they just from uh, 2-0 humbling by Aston Villa to dent their Premier League ambitions. Question is, will Arsenal proceed to the semi-finals Manchester, and play either Manchester City or, or Real Madrid? Now, we'll be looking at that after 90 minutes of play in, in a game that will be starting in the next 29 minutes or so. And of course, we'll be talking about all that and the games that will be happening over the weekend on Monday at, on Sports 360 from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. All in all, I'm so certain Arsenal are not qualifying because they lack the pedigree and experience in matters of European competition. So long as we have Zinchenko, our local and daily customer, then all is good. Leroy San is going to eat good tonight. Now, with that, we wrap up our bulletin at this particular moment in time. Thank you very much. Do have yourself a wonderful night. And like always, God bless. value your feedback and welcome your complaints about our programming and operations. Feel free to get in touch with us through 0700 